are the wives. This is your weekly Monday happy hour. This is the Wives of Wrestling podcast presented to you exclusively by Podcast Heat. I, of course, am John Alba, your hostess with the most disjoined as I am every single week by the wives of wrestling themselves. Mrs. Giovanna Angle, Mrs. Kim Orton, ladies, how are we Hello. doing this week? Very good. Very good. Weather's been good. Kids are going back to school. Mama's happy. <laughs> Gee, how are we doing? I concur. Is that how you say it? <laughs> you concur? Yes. <laughs> I don't know. But you know what I mean. Yeah. So, yeah, everything's great over here. Well, it's always better on the wise when we add one to our menage a trois. That, of course, this week we have a very special guest. It is uh, one of my favorites in pro wrestling today, you know, the last 15 years, frankly, because she's got attitude and she's come a long, long way in her career. That, of course, is Maria Canellis Bennett, and she is joining us on the Wives of Wrestling podcast. Maria, Ooh, what's cooking? Thank you so much for having me. I'm a big fan of the show. So when you asked me, I was like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you for coming on. We're super excited to have you. Thank you so much for having me. I asked Maria to come on, and she's like, I love them. Yes. <laughs> she fits right in. She really does. Yes. She really does. Wel- welcome to the uh, the Animal House, Maria. It's it's very exciting to have you here. Maria is making the time for us because she is about to go on vacation like an hour after we finish taping this. Yeah. So. Really vacation when you have a four-year-old and a two-year-old. I, I no. feel like it's, you know, you say vacation, but that's not really vacation. When you go no. to the beach and you're single, it's like one little bag and you're like cute with your flip-flops. <laughs> now it's like you're bringing the whole house. Isn't the- it? It's, it's ridiculous. Insane. Insane. You need a vacation from your vacation when you vacation with your family. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. How do you guys make the time for that? Because I know that I've like barely ever made time for myself to vacation period. So when you have kids come with you on um, what is supposed to be a getaway, how do you balance finding that time of, okay, I got to look after the kids to also, I got to look after myself. Well, hmm. so for us, um, we live in Illinois, but my husband's family lives in Massachusetts. So we always have to find a little bit of time during the summer to spend some time with his family. We try and spend time with his family around the holidays as well. And it's tough. You know, you're juggling that. But I also know for my own sanity, as well as my husband's, um, we have to make time for the in-laws. Um, it's very, very important for the kids mm-hmm. to see their grandparents. Um, I've always been like... I've always been a family person. I live in the town that I grew up in. My mom Mm. lives three minutes from me. So for me, like having family and that family connection is the most important thing. Um, I'll forego my own personal, um, uh, you know, enjoyment of just Mm -hmm. laying on the beach so that I can spend time with the kids running around and making sure no one dies or put something in their mouth that they're not supposed to. (laughs) That's good. That's positive. Gee, gee, you just went on a little staycation kind of thing. You went to the amusement park the other day, I saw. It's so funny because, I, see, I say it. I always say it. I just so funny. I, I say it. <laughs> Before I start a sentence, somebody reached out and said, do you always say it's so funny because, and I just realized I do it. So now I have to, like, think before I talk now. Thanks. Thanks a lot, guys. Um, we, we, at the, at end, the end of, like, right summer like before school starts is when me and kurt panic we're like oh shit we didn't do enough do anything right so we did it um a little like quick vacation it's not vacation but it's like a little trip thank god erie is two and a half hours Mm. like yeah like two hours away from us and it's so funny because see i just said it again (laughs) fuck me (laughs) fuck my life oh my god okay so (laughs) um the kids, shut up, John. The kids, ear, uh, the lake is so big. The kids always think that they are going to the beach, like the right. Florida or oh, something. they're going to the ocean. Yes, they always do. And there's sand and everything. So we went, to, uh, we went to Lake Erie for the night. And then we went to Splash Lagoon, which was so fun. <laughs> it's an indoor uh, water park. <laughs> I was so worried about his knees the whole time. And he just kept following us. Like we, there was these steps that kept going up to go to the water slide down. And I was like, Kurt, go to the hot tub because that's just me. Remember, like always taking care of him. I'm like, go to the hot tub. We're going to go on this slide. So all of a sudden we are all the way up to the top 
And I turn around and Kurt's holding this big ass raft. No. And I'm like, what are you doing? He's just like, I got this. He's like, I jumped off of freaking ropes and everything. I think I could take a water slide. And I'm like, oh my God. But you know what? Thank God because he got to enjoy it and I haven't seen him like living oh. his mm-hmm. his youth in that way in a like a long time and we just had a blast so on the way home it's like okay so it's two hours and then we had the hour mark and i was like a little spontaneous and it said safari uh like a Ooh. zoo thing and i looked at kurt i was like should we go and he's like let's do it and i was like kids you want to go on like it's like a like like 30 minute safari so they were like yeah so we went and then it was so cool because <laughs> kurt took all these videos and he posted it. there was like buffalo and everything we had to buy these food and the buffalo came into the car and kurt's all like this is fucking awesome and it was it was it was a cute little little quick getaway and then yesterday i took the kids to the um kennywood which I haven't been in forever. So it was such a fun little thing, but I feel like now the kids are getting older. I'm starting to enjoy. It's not like much of a cake. It's it's getting easier now. And I see them having fun and I'm having fun with like, they can ride the rides that I can ride and they're not scared now. Like Nicoletta is such a little beast. Like she's five and she's like, I want to go on the big ride. And we, we went on a big ride and she had a blast. So it's just easier now, but yeah, that's my, that's my week. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love that. And, and I'm glad that you took some time for yourself and the family. Yeah. Family's yourself. important. Family time's important because when they get order, you're going to look back and you're going to wish you did more with them. And I just, you just blink, you know, Kim knows all about that. So her, her kid graduated one to college. Oh, oh my. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, no, that <laughs> I have one going in his third year now in college awesome. and Brooklyn is going to kindergarten. <gasps> so, oh, yeah. gosh. No, so they're kind of scattered. Yeah. Like, How oh. is that? Do you like having them so far apart or do you like, you know, would you want them? Closer? Oh, I, so when I when I had the boys, they were they were close together. Right. Yeah. And then um, then I got Alana. And she was already five when I met her. So then having Brooklyn, you know, it was like, oh, my God, like the the little girl yeah. that I never got to experience. Uh-huh. And so now, like Giovanna said, she's getting older. It's getting easier. You know, my big giant bag has turned into a fanny pack. Nice. <laughs> okay. Like, get it from. Yeah, always. To be fair, Brooklyn was born a 16-year-old girl. So <laughs> kind, of, <laughs> kind of she's kind of like grown. Her attitude is just wow. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how your little ones are, Maria. Do they have mom's or dad's attitude? Because little girls are feisty. Oh yeah, they're they're fierce. Oh. So my my son is definitely your typical mama's boy. And then mm. my daughter is daddy's little girl. And mm. um, to the point where if Mike goes to give me a hug in the kitchen or just like good morning or whatever, my son will come in between us and push us apart and say, daddy, no, my <laughs> mommy. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's the other way with my daughter, it's, it's wild. But Freddie, it, my daughter's name is Freddie, but uh, she's so um, particular about what she wants and how she wants it that I'm constantly like if something's touching on the plate of food that she has or if you know if if she doesn't have the right outfit and then crocs are like the new thing and she saw her older cousins wearing them and so she wants these crocs and she wants the sparkly stuff on the shoes and all these little I'm like no you're four like you're not supposed to get all that (laughs) stuff yet is she very girly or is she like Oh, she is. Okay. And we weren't like, we weren't like, you know, oh, we're going to make you be one way or another. We let them play with everything. Mm -hmm. But I have the girliest girl and the most boy boy on the planet. Like (laughs) he, my son will see a tractor as we're like driving down the road. And he like tries to like evacuate the car. (laughs) And I'm like, no, 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 you have to like stay like, and he's like trying to get out of the car seat and going nice. And then, 
like okay. my daughter, anything that sparkles. I, if I want to feel good about myself, I go try something on that I'm wearing for the weekend and come downstairs. No makeup, no nothing on it. She's like, oh, mommy, that's so pretty. And it's just because it's sparkly. Oh. She Isn't just loves sparkles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's so cute. Yeah. It's, so, so is your kids into oh, wrestling oh. now? Yeah. <laughs> you got the boy and the girl. You could stop. <laughs> so my my daughter's very fearful. And so uh, we brought them to a show for the first time since the pandemic. And she was okay, like, getting in the ring and stuff. She kind of uh, – she found a little boyfriend during the weekend. Ooh. It was uh, Jet – um, uh, Josh Alexander's son, oh, and okay. she was running around with him a bit. But as soon as the show started and it got loud, she wanted to go. Mm-hmm. So my mom had to take her out of there because she just she couldn't handle it. Um, mm-hmm. She she doesn't really like loud noises. Um, she's got a very sensitive nose. She um, when th- things get too chaotic, she doesn't like that. So. No, not for her, but my son screamed the whole way leaving because he wanted to stay oh. and chopped the crap out of my husband and like, <laughs> like, and he will, he will try so hard to like, um, get my husband down. And Mike's like, you may think that you're tough now, but daddy's still tougher than you and still stronger than you. <laughs> Ridiculous. I'll say that to my 17 year old. Yeah, I'm sure you do. <laughs> uh, so, we are, as I said, we're so grateful to have you here. And, and your career is just such a cool story of reinvention. And, 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 and no, it really is. And, and we're going to get into that. But before we do, uh, we have a little tradition here on the Lives of Wrestling, okay. and that is an opening toast. Uh, Giovanna oh. was, was running around today, and so she's got her imaginary shot glass with her this, <laughs> this, this morning, this afternoon, whatever it is. Um, I'll do a little for you, G. But Thanks. we would we would like to thank you for hopping on with us here, and we toast to yes, you and, thank you. and that thank your you happy much. and healthy family. So Mama's <laughs> killing it in the wrestling biz. <laughs> Cheers. Or I could do a John Cena. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here, here's Kim. Here's Kim. Got about. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll get into John Cena later. <laughs> um, so. I, I don't know, ladies, how familiar you are with how Maria's career started in wrestling, but uh, I remember so distinctly the Diva Search. It was such a big part of WWE at the time. And so we're talking mid 2000s, early mid 2000s here, and it's this really competitive contest that is pitting brains and brawn against one another, but most importantly, looks. That was a huge aspect of what WWE was looking for in women at the time, and. What you've been able to do, Maria, in your career in terms of taking that and turning it into something where you are setting an example for women around the world that you can be a strong and uh, feisty and intellectual woman. I think that's a great uh, lesson to impart on other fans. So in reflecting on your journey, what has been that what has that process been like for you in evolving yourself and setting that example? Um, well, it's a long story, but I'll try and keep it semi short. Uh, I grew up in a household where my dad is hundred percent Greek. He, um, his parents immigrated, um, and the Greek mentality at that time, and he no longer has this view, but was the man was the head of the household. And the woman was supposed to take care of the kids and take care of the house. And my mom had a full-time job. And plus, she was working extra hours because I took every dance class known to man. So mm. that woman worked her ass off. But she also was the, did the most child rearing. She um, kept everything clean. She kept our schedule. She drove us everywhere. Um, my dad was very present. But it was mostly my mom. And um, you know, watching her navigate that plus having to take care of the house. Um, I, I kind of made a very early promise to myself that I would never be like that, that I would never be responsible for taking care of 100% of the house and 100% of the child rearing. Mm-hmm. And so I remember being 12 and yelling back at my dad, like, just because she's my mom doesn't mean she has to clean the house. Why don't you pick up your own dishes? You know, my mom <laughs> cook and clean all this like 
fierce. And I don't know how much you know about Greeks, but our tempers are brutal. Um, and so there was a few tables thrown and I ran away the first time, ran away right. uh, a day uh, at like 17. And then I left my house again at 19. And um, I, when I left my house at 19, everybody was very angry. And uh, my dad and I had gotten into an argument because I think I was, I was home, but I had like work stuff to do and he wanted me to clean the house and we just got into a fight and um, I left. And it wasn't until 9-11 that I ended up talking to my parents. Oh, wow. um, and so it was like two or three months that I hadn't had any communication with them. And that's when like we started to get along again. But during that time, I was also living in Kentu uh, Covington, Kentucky and doing all these bikini modeling things. And by the way, I hate bikinis. I hate them. What? I always wanted to do fashion. And so uh, uh, like being in the diva search and like, I, I think I must have, so I was 22 when I entered in the diva search um, and at the time I was doing bikini uh, competitions like every other weekend. And I just remember being on stage and being like, this isn't me. Like, I'm just yeah. not this bikini model. I hated it. I liked, wow. I liked fashion, I liked editorial, but I wasn't tall enough and I wasn't skinny enough. Um, and I had boobs and at the time that wasn't, you know, that wasn't the style of mm. models. So um, I entered in uh, Outback Jack, which was a reality show. I placed fifth on that. I thought it was absolutely ridiculous, but I did it anyways, because it was entertainment. And then um, I did the diva search. And when I did the diva search, there was so many times that I just remember thinking to myself, like, why am I out here in this bikini? Like, it's so far removed from what I wanted. Um, but what I did want is to be an interviewer. I loved everything Jonathan Coachman did. Absolutely loved it. I thought he was funny and fun and he got the story over. And so that's what I wanted to do. And um, I got let go of the, from the diva search and I think I was fifth and I just kept calling. Uh, John Laurinaitis called him every week asking for a job until he gave me one. And then that was the start of my career with WWE. Uh -huh. I was very annoying. Like, Persistent. Persistent. <laughs> There's annoying. nothing wrong with that. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, then uh, Paul Heyman helped me with my character to develop this character because mm -hmm. I knew everybody in wrestling. Like, I was so excited to meet Kurt and to meet Randy and to meet all, like, Taker because I knew wrestling and I had been a fan. But did your family like, watch wrestling? They did, yeah. And I actually broke my brother's nose when I was oh, when he was <laughs> three years old because I was I wrestled him. Uh, uh, and you know, so I grew up in that that type of family. And like my family is uh, blue collar to the hill. My dad was a prison guard. My mom worked in the nursing same. home, and like so, you know, we did camping trips and all of that. We were a like feisty, aggressive family, you know, mm -hmm. we just, uh, blue collar hillbilly family. <laughs> uh, and so then, you know, Paul Heyman helped me with my character, which was, um, one of the hardest things for me to do because so mm. much of it, I was like, what the hell? Why am I so stupid? Like I was just, <laughs> character. but now that I look back at it, it gave me so many opportunities. I got to work with everybody. I, I, I worked with, you know, I, I worked with Ric Flair. I worked with Cena. I worked, I worked with everybody because I had this character. And then um, I was like, sure, I'll, I'll get in the ring. So I, I got in the ring too. Um, Vince McMahon didn't really want me uh, doing too many moves in the ring, too, being too aggressive because I was this baby face. And the whole time I'm like, wait a minute, I can kick some ass too. Like, somebody up. <laughs> they didn't want that. So mm -hmm. fine. Um, fast forward to getting released, which, um, you know, I, when I was released, I, I was fighting for um, my rights. I was fighting for a better pay. I, I knew what the guys were getting paid. And I was like, well, hell, give me part of that. Like, give me something mm -hmm. like yeah. relatable. For as many days as I was on the road, I was like 
barely home. I mean, I'm sure you guys, you know, remember the times where it was like we were on the road for five days a week and yeah. coming home on that sixth day and being done and then going back out on the road again. And I, they didn't want to give me a pay raise that was, you know, showing the value I had to the company. So I was like, all right, I guess I'll go. And uh, then it was it was very difficult to convince people I wasn't stupid. And wow. so you were tight. Uh, oh, yeah, for sure. Everybody like I would do interviews and people would be like, oh, I I didn't know that you actually had a thought or <laughs> wow, <laughs> it took me forever. And I just I, I remember getting off so many interviews and people saying, oh, I thought you were dumb. And I was like, I, Thank okay, you. is that a compliment? Is that an insult? Right. Like, I don't I don't know how to like. <laughs> So finally, I started in Ring of Honor, and um, Delirious Hunter um, over there, he he gave me the mic, and he said, say what you want. And mm. I was like, are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and my, because I had a lot to say. I was wow. pissed off about so many things. I had fought for rights in WWE. I had sat down with Vince. I had done the whole thing. I, I wanted more time on TV. So... Um, by the time I got to Ring of Honor, I had a lot of things to say. So I was like, fuck it, I'll do it. And um, I I started cutting these promos and I started working with my husband. Um, and then I got to work with the Briscoe brothers and the Briscoes, they let me be strong. Mm. And those two motherfuckers are the toughest in the industry. Yes, so like, I, them making me look strong saved my career. That's like, awesome. That's so absolutely cool. Absolutely saved my career. Um, lo and behold, Mark gave the blessing at my wedding, <laughs> Mark Briscoe. And, um, you know, they they really changed the way I was looked at in the industry. And then we go to New Japan. And um, there hadn't been a lot of women over in New Japan. And nobody was supposed to touch the bo None of the women were supposed to touch the boys. But I did. Yeah. I slipped a few of them. I, you know, tripped them. I did all these things. And so even though the door was only open a little bit, at least it was open a little bit. And so then went from there to Impact Wrestling, then back to WWE. That run, not so great. Um, and then I got to go to Ring of Honor um, for the second time. And... The second time in Ring of Honor, they offered me something completely different, and that was to actually book the women's division. And I had talked with them before about doing it, but the timing was wrong um, the first time. But during the pandemic, um, there was a lot more opportunity, uh, especially in Ring of Honor, because we could keep it a close set. If I if I screwed up, if I needed help, if whatever, I, I had it all there. It was all available to me. So book the women's division and that was the most fulfilling year of my career i got to work with uh, around 20 women and they were incredible and uh, all different shapes all different sizes all different attitudes um all different gender identities so for me it was i really found my passion in that i had fought for different things in the past, for better pay, for more rights, more time. But this was the first time I could actually do something about it. It's like, nope, we're gonna have, uh, we're gonna have a women's match every other show. Our shows were only an hour, so we had a, a show, um, women's match every other show. We also had our own show on Wednesday evenings. On a, it was on the YouTube channel, um, and we were able to showcase all these new stars and. Then it came to an end because Ring of Honor came to an end. And um, I've been in talks with Tony Khan about, you know, moving forward, what they're going to do with the women's division in Ring of Honor. But um, when everything was going down and when Ring of Honor was closing, the girls came up to me and Bobby Cruz, who was my partner in booking the women's division, and asked us, you know, you guys got to start something. And I was like, oh, wow. no, fuck, I don't want to. I don't want to be a promoter. I don't want all that. Like, it, there's a lot of bullshit that goes with it. And um, we were just asked one too many times. So we started our own promotion, which started in May of this year. And it's called Women's Wrestling Army. Um, and 
<laughs> yes. Thanks. And she employs several friends of mine. So kudos to you on that. I appreciate it. Put me through a table, Maria. <laughs> what? I said, put me through a table, Maria. She wants to, go, Maria. She wants oh, yeah. to go through it's a table so badly. She <laughs> wants to take a table bump so badly, and she doesn't realize how much it would suck. I, I, <laughs> I know. I know. I know. I don't know why I want to do it so bad. Because it, it, it challenges you. And especially as a mom, sometimes you're like, wait, I got to feel I alive again. That. Right. I get so, you know, so I want to remember, like, what does that freedom feel, that fear feel that, like, yeah. no, I've been doing this. And, yes. um, but yeah, I mean, uh, the the women's show is absolutely incredible. Uh, we're 12 episodes in, 10 episodes um, this week have aired. Uh, we are going to have to take a hiatus, which I'm very sad about. But um, And actually, this morning, I had to email all the girls um, and cancel a show, which was never announced. But to me, it's announced because we already have booked the girls. Um, but our contracts haven't been um, completed yet. Gotcha. And so... I just, I don't feel right about, you know, keeping them under this agreement of, hey, yeah. we're going to run the show when all of our I's aren't dotted and our T's aren't crossed. Mm -hmm. And that's the part that sucks. That's why I didn't want to be a promoter because I don't want to do that to people. Like mm -hmm. I, I am a person of my word. And when I, when I knew this week that it probably wasn't going to be able to happen, we were fighting it tooth and nail, and then we just had to cancel, um, postpone. But we are going to be running a show in October, and um, we run our shows eight episodes um, filmed over the course of two days. So I'm excited to get back out there and do that. But sometimes you got to take that step back to push yourselves forward. So hopefully, in the end, it'll be for the best. Yeah. You have a lot going on. <laughs> I know. And hey, she's here. raising two yeah. kids. And so. Raising two kids. I used. I I saw you went to that modeling like school or yeah. Over that the, was kind yeah. of like, like mommy weekend. I I needed I needed to get away. That um, working with Coco was awesome. I still take. I still um, talk to her from time to time. Um, but I, I needed that. It's that that whole thing of you know remembering who you are. I yeah. I had postpartum depression so bad after mm. both of my kids, and mm -hmm. um, that was during the pandemic that I went and did that. Um, just because I needed to get out for a couple of days. Yeah, you needed to feel you. you yeah, you, you took some crazy good pics though. <laughs> Thank you. Wait, Thank do you. you still do your um? Don't you like do parties and stuff too? Uh-huh. Yeah. Too, yeah. I haven't been doing them lately though. The pandemic killed my business. Oh. Um, and so I, I haven't been doing them lately, but I still own the business. Um, if people need stuff, I rent it out to them. Um, but yeah, I, I love party planning. I go a little <laughs> overboard. I'm like crazy when it comes to birthday parties and stuff. Like, it's just ridiculous. No. I'm like, okay, so we need a Peppa Pig house and a muddy puddle <laughs> and <laughs> yep. no, you no. get very detailed, right? Uh -huh. I do. Awesome. I feel like I, I'm the same way. <laughs> A lot of people are like, you should do this for a living. And I'm like, no, I I will do this for the people I love because mm -hmm. I am like so detailed and everything. Yeah. So I can't do that. But like the thing about your story and a lot of female wrestlers in your era, I love hearing things like that because a lot of fans don't remember and they, they need to respect what you guys went through because mm -hmm. the females now would not be where they are if it wasn't for you. Definitely. If it wasn't for the the female wrestlers in your era. So I thank you for the the present female wrestlers. I thank you for the future female wrestlers. And honestly, because like I don't want to cry or anything. I feel like I'm gonna cry, but my I have three daughters. And what if they want to be in wrestling? And I thank you so much for their future. Mm -hmm. And every every other female, you know, little girls that are looking watching WWE and AEW right now. So just want to say thank you yes. and so much love for you and the females that went through what they went through. So thank you. I I look at it. Um, I look at it now and just think about 
how many people were like, oh, the stupid diva search or, oh, you know, they didn't know what they were doing, blah, blah, blah. But like, think about how many are still relevant. Mm -hmm. Think about how many, like, you've got the Bella twins who have had multiple shows. You have Maurice who is still killing it. And I don't know where she got that booty from, but it's amazing. (laughs) (laughs) You you think about Mickey who was considered a diva and you, you think about um, Natalia who was a diva and, um, you know, Trish and uh, Lita and all these women that they're still around. So yeah. kidding, you know, they're they're still making their mark on the industry. Um, these are some of them are, are still my mentors. And now thinking about it is almost, you know, it's almost funny to me because they're only a few years older than me. Mm-hmm. But at the time, Lita and Trish, they were like these goddesses that I looked up to and I still look up to them. But like thinking about you know, being in this industry and what was considered a veteran then as being in the industry a few years to being a veteran now where there's Gail and myself and Mickey and we, we've been in this business for you know, 15, 20 years. Yeah. I've been in for 18. Wow. Like there's girls that I have worked with that were literally a year or that I've employed that were literally a year old when I started. And that's Roxanne, and she's yeah. right now down in NXT. She's crushing it. She was one year old when I started. Like, that's insane. There's another girl that wasn't even born that is going to be at our tapings, and that's Billy. Like, so, mm. and and these are women that so. And I had this experience, and I I hope she doesn't mind me telling the story, but I I'm, I don't think she would. But so I had never met Tony, um, Tony Storm, and. I, you know, of course, like she's been in WWE and she's now in AEW. I was very excited to meet her because I thought she looked so cool and like, you know, she just looked fun. So I was very excited to meet her, but I forgot like, oh yeah, I've been in this for a while. So (laughs) these two little giddy girls that are like, oh my God, like back and forth about, you know, oh, I used to watch you and I, you know, and then I'm going, oh, but I watch you now. And so it's cool that there's so many of us now that it's like this vast amount of years in this industry. So cool. That's awesome. And you were so versatile too. You still are very versatile in what you're doing. Like you mentioned you were doing the ditzy interviewer, but then you could lock in this intent. I'll never forget this. And ladies, I don't know if you've ever seen this segment, but uh, it's the trial of Eric Bischoff where Eric Bischoff is on trial for being a bad general manager of raw. And they bring in Maria to testify against his egregious actions. And Jonathan Coachman is. His oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> and, and they're like, Oh, we bring in Maria and coach and, and Bischoff are like, oh, okay, we got this. And Maria goes stone face yeah. and just rattles off these salacious accusations against Eric and like jaw drops. I remember watching it live and being like, that chick is so smart and so good at this. It was awesome. What did you credit that versatility to in allowing you to be that kind of performer? The hardest thing I could have done was play dumb. So everything else was easy. <laughs> and I, I'm a, I'm a big Lucille Ball fan. Oh, like, okay. oh, yeah. And that woman, she was one of the first women to own a production company and a studio. So um, for me just knowing Lucille Ball owned a production company, owned a studio, but played so silly on Mm -hmm. television. um, It allowed me to do it and just like immerse myself in it. But that scene was terrifying. Like just imagine Eric Bischoff and Vince McMahon. And then you've got uh, Jonathan Coachman and Mick Foley and all these people in the room. And it's like, okay, we're going to need you to do this. We did two takes. First take, something was messed up with the camera. I think they saw a boom. And so I had to redo it. That was it. Two takes, I was done. And I have to say, I was celebrating to be done with that scene because it was terrifying. It was in front of like all the like major people in the industry at the time. And you had to feel they were just ready to shit on it, right? (laughs) Oh yeah, because it starts with me asking to talk to Mr. Sacco. 
So like it, <laughs> I had to start in like that. Oh my god! So like I really wanted to talk to Mr. Sacco. What is this? And then like I had to switch it and then go straight into the other. And um, yeah. So it was the hardest thing in the world for me to play stupid. Um, so like everything else now has just been fun. So why were you so good at it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <sighs> so I knew a few people. That <laughs> a couple of things. <laughs> She's like, I did tape studies. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. I may, may have walked around. <laughs> Hello, people. <laughs> Myself with a couple of people who weren't too bright and just picked I, up. I came. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean. Well, that was like the time where Jessica Simpson was like really popular. It was like the chicken of the oh, sea with the tuna true. thing, right? Like, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, there was a lot of there was a lot of things to pull from there. So, um, but I I wouldn't change it for the world. I like. I'm always reminded of who I worked with. Like I forget like different people that I worked with along the line because of that. That's awesome. It's yeah. so funny because you're like, the hardest thing I had to do is play dumb. And I was like, so why was it so easy for my husband to play? It's <laughs> making me no wonder. <laughs> why? Why did he love playing dumb? Your husband's also so good. So. Right. Hey, Maria, what did you think of Randy Orton and uh, Kurt Angle once you met them? What were your first impressions of them? <laughs> oh, oh God. Randy scared me for a while. <laughs> uh, he was he was not uh, with me then. <laughs> oh no, and that and that's the thing. Like, me neither. <laughs> I, I feel like I've I've been blessed to watch people grow, grow up. And, yeah, and I remember meeting Randy the second time around in WWE and thinking, this is not the same person. But oh, oh good. <laughs> here's the thing you don't, you don't remember is like we were growing up in the industry. Mm -hmm. Like most people don't have to grow up on live television mm -hmm. with all these other people watching you. And uh, Randy with yeah. his family history in it, like there there was a lot of pressure in there. So um no, I was terrified of Randy. Kurt was always a sweetheart. Um, and he had to angle slam me one time. And I just remember him like asking me a hundred times after, are you okay? Are you okay? Are and I'm like, no, I'm fine. Like I didn't even feel it. He protected me so well. Didn't even feel it. But I, I watched these. Glad to hear. <laughs> grow, and like, I've had a couple guys that have actually, like I worked the, with them the first time around in WWE, then ended up working with them at impact or back in WWE. And they're like, so I'm sorry for my younger self. And I'm like, it's, it's fine. Like I, we all grew. Like I was an asshole at certain points in my career too. There's things I look back at, like when I was nasty to my mom one time or when, um, you know, cause I was angry about something happening on the road. And I think back and I'm like, why was I so mean? But there was just so much at that time, um, that you had to put up with and go through. Thank Did you ever go through like stories where like people are like, do you remember it? But you blocked it out. I think I talked to you about this, Kim, like on yeah. a phone call once in a yeah. while, but like, yeah, yeah. Do you like remember things like people are like, oh, do you remember this? And you're like, no, I don't even remember who <laughs> like that person is. Mm -mm. No. And I, <sighs> there, there's certain things that have happened that I, I couldn't recall if it, it's like, there's certain things on television that happened that I don't remember. Like segments I was a part of that I don't remember. Um, That's just, you like. were exhausted. Like, it, that was the other thing is that schedule back then was exhausting. And most of the time you had to drive between towns with mm -hmm. a map. Here I am with my map by myself, like 22 years old going, all right, well, here's this wherever town in the middle of Bufu, Kentucky. And I'm like, uh, I guess I'll get there. Like, it's crazy. It was, yeah, it was crazy. Insanity. I know the, um, I got to bring it up. The, <laughs> The um, fireworks story. Uh huh. And, <laughs> so I, I have What's to bring that up. Fireworks story. A fireworks story. So my uh, Maria, would you like to uh, tell them what my husband did to you, and then I can tell them what he did to my family after. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't remember why there were fireworks, 
Um, I, I think maybe it was around the 4th of July. And so the boys had bought a bunch of fireworks. And so I was in the car with a group of people and all of a sudden Randy's shooting fireworks. And I'm like, oh my God, we're going to die. We are going to, I was so afraid that it was going to go up the tailpipe and we were just going to blow up. Just just blow up. (laughs) I was terrified. Um, But yeah. Shot fireworks at us. Yeah, yeah. And, and and it's so funny because um we were remembering last night. I was like, oh my gosh, Maria's coming on tomorrow. And he goes, Oh no. <laughs> and I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like, uh, he goes, Oh my god, I know what you can tell her. Tell her about the first fourth of July that I came to your house. So he comes to we have every year in New York, we had these big fourth of July backyard parties, right? And we had like 100 people over. So now Randy, 4th of July is his favorite holiday. And so he's like, that's it. I'm going and buying all these fireworks. I'm going to be like the man and da, da, da. So now he's meeting all of these people for the first time. And so he sets up a table in the yard with all these fireworks and stuff on it. (laughs) The first one, the first box he lights off, the table tips over. Oh, my God. Oh, my God shooting at all of us and my kids were little everybody starts running oh, it's worse it's yeah. worse like i'm like oh my god like people were, like ducking and stuff i was like i didn't know it was his so- favorite that's hilarious <laughs> yes. it's yeah. it makes sense now right. that you think about it yeah so so maybe that was like a term of endearment maybe i don't know that's your point <laughs> the things that happen it just yeah it was, so, it was a wild time right before you came back uh to wwe i'm like look he's like oh maria mike and maria are coming back and i was like oh okay so then uh never met you guys before or anything right so then then he tells me about the fireworks story so i'm like oh no right so i google it and then i see like uh the interview you did with that, I don't know who the guy was, right? And then some like, national. I don't know. I turned to him, him and I'm like, What? You what did you do? And he's like, <laughs> he goes, Honey, I was so young. I was an asshole. I'm sorry. He was like, I was just young. I'm like, all right, I get it. And then uh I just while we're on this topic, the shitting in the bag story. Oh no. Right? So but <clears throat> It's not true. He didn't shit in anyone's bag. It was oh, Tanner. Man. It was Tanner. And he had to pay for the bag that he put the Tanner in. And I don't know. <laughs> so there, there was a time I might have watched a door that terrified me. And yeah. Mm-hmm, yeah. If, oh, we, if we're going about that, uh, being about that time. Yeah, I watched, I watched mm-hmm. the door one time. But I was afraid to say no. Like, <laughs> okay, can we can we start from the beginning of this <laughs> shit Tanner bag okay, situation? So I I don't know why, but I must have been coming out the door as a couple people were going into the door of you mean like WWE people. backstage? Yeah, where, where was backstage. it? Backstage. Okay. I don't remember where we were. I never remember towns. Some people remember all the towns. I don't mm. remember any of them. So I am exiting the women's locker room. Here comes people into the women's locker room. And they said, can you watch the door? And I'm scared. And I'm like, okay, I guess I'll watch the door. And I'm like, oh, my God, what is happening in there? And yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so he so Randy put Tanner in someone's purse. And I think they had, might have had like shoes or something in it or something. But he he got in trouble and he had to a pay for the bag and the shoes and stuff like that. But he he gets hot. He's like, everybody says I shit in a bag. I never shit in a bag. I like, never shit in a bag. It was Tanner. It wasn't shit. Well, that that was a thing that used turn. to happen. That used to happen back in the day a lot in wrestling. That was like a rib amongst the boys. So. That's I love how we're like clearing Randy's name right now. What else did Randy Orton do? God, I need to clear I, out. I, I, you know, it's it's funny, like I, I was scared of Randy the first time around. 
Then I go back the second time. My husband falls in love with him. If I have to hear any more <laughs> Randy stories and how he's so nice and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, I get it. He's a nice guy. But like, at the time, he was scary. <laughs> so like, it's just so funny to me because like, Mike has met people you know, later in their careers and mm-hmm. he just falls in love with them. And like, um, you know, Randy was one of them that, you know, Mike just, he just loved talking to Randy. And, um, you know, he's, he's, at, Randy's actually one of the few, like, good memories for Mike in WWE of um, his uh, run there because he, he didn't like uh, being in WWE. Yeah. Now I think it's different, but like, he yeah. didn't like his time in WWE. Yeah, I, I do want to talk about Mike real quick here before we get to our surprise game that not even the ladies know about. But uh, uh, you are, you both, you and Mike are, are very outspoken on social media about addiction. Mike has gone through some addiction, he's tackled addiction and he's come out on the other side of it and it's a success story. And mm-hmm. you guys are very encouraging of, of people seeking help and stuff. Giovanna was just featured in Kurt's documentary talking about that. Why is it important for you guys to use your platform in that way for me it's important because i used to view addiction as a weakness Mm. Mm. and then it happened to my husband Mm -hmm. there's been so many times in my career because it's been you know over the course of two decades that i had to grow up and learn um that i don't know everything like I, i I'm learning something every day. And now and now I feel blessed to be learning something every day. But for the longest time, I thought it was weakness. And um, then it happened to Mike and I didn't realize how many people went through it. I didn't realize um, that it could happen to anybody, that um, people could hide it so well, that people mm. were in pain and how afraid people were to talk about it because of people like me that thought it was a weakness. So like for me, it's been a full circle of just realizing that it does happen and it's fucking hard. It is so incredibly hard because it's not, it's a disease. It's not something you could just turn the switch off and say, nope, that's not happening anymore. Like I literally spent um, I spent a weekend with my husband in a hotel, this beautiful resort down in Florida, making sure that he didn't die, like mm-hmm. because he was in recovery and he was in withdrawals. And so I, I had to like make sure he was, uh, he had to wear a patch, which you can actually see in his debut match for WWE. Um, he had a band aid over it. He had a patch on to regulate his um, blood pressure and his um, heart rate and everything. And so I had to make sure he was taking that stuff to get him and wean him off of uh, the pain medication he was on. Uh, And then, you know, hold the bucket for him to throw up in. And he was shivering so bad. Like some people get to where they just shake and he was shaking so bad and I just had to hold him. Mm. And then two weeks after that, I found out I was pregnant. Oh, and um, that was with my first. And so I, I didn't know what to expect. Like I never been pregnant before. And, um, and I just, I sat on the floor of the bathroom, bawling my eyes out, looking at this pregnancy test and being completely disconnected from my husband because I still didn't understand addiction. And I didn't, I, I was blaming him for this. Um, and then I came to this realization that in order for me to uh, have have a healthy pregnancy, but then also um, have a healthy home and have a healthy marriage, that I was going to have to accept and forgive. So, uh, and we're still on that path. Of course. Like, mm-hmm. It's addiction not- isn't something that just goes away. Like that is an energy that a person has that needs to go somewhere. Like, yes, 
and I, I, for Mike, it goes to working out and now he's in a meditation and listening to podcasts, but he, it's a search. It's a hole in your heart. It's something that you, you, you can't really understand or you can't really fill. So, um, yeah, it's, it's wild. Like it, it was like, God was like, no, you need to learn this lesson and mm -hmm. you need to learn acceptance and forgiveness. Do you go to meetings with him and you, you don't? So we did do some counseling. Um, he didn't go to um, like Alcoholics Anonymous or uh, the NA, NA. Yeah, he, yeah, he didn't go to that. Um, and I, I don't know like why that decision was made. Like, I don't know if just in his mind, like he just couldn't do it or, but for him, we walked so much. Like when he was feeling the need to take something, do something, we walked everywhere, like mm. miles and miles over that first year and just talked things through. And um, he worked out more. He learned how to stretch. Now his body looks completely different. He looks amazing. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, part of it was, you know, being on the painkillers. And then yeah. um, part of it was like forgetting that, you know, he had taken the painkillers and then forgetting that he had already eaten or forgetting. He was just so bloated. Like it, it, he just was retaining water like crazy because he was eating pizza every night and staying up until three, four, five in the morning. Um, so how we did it was I became like a dictator in my house. I had everything. I had his phone. I had his pad. I had his wallet. I had everything. And I just, um, I just watched everything he did. I he was taking, um, he was taking blood tests. Um, from time to time, um, or P tests, uh, to make sure that he wasn't doing when, what, when he went back on the road. Cause shortly after he came out that he had an addiction, um, I had to get off the road because I was pregnant. So, um, we had to learn how to trust each other again. Cause he mm -hmm. lied to me, like, mm -hmm. wouldn't believe. And like lied about money, lied about where he was going. Like it was just wild. Um, but then I also forced him to move to Illinois because I was like, that's it. We're done. We're moving next to my family. Because I was afraid. I was afraid he's going to kill himself in the middle of the night. Like, yeah. and I, so I was like, at least if he murders himself, like, you know, has a drug overdose or decides to commit suicide, something, then I'll have my mom down the road if, you know, if I have a brand new baby or oh, if that's so I'm scary to think about but but, like thoughts that have to, that's mm -hmm. real, real thoughts that mm -hmm. you think about, you know, you're not living yeah. in a fantasy world. That's something that yeah. will happen eventually. If they continue doing that, it's funny that see funny. It's funny. How is this funny? Um, <laughs> fuck my words, <laughs> you know, you, you said your dad's a, um, he was a prison guard, so was mine. Mm -hmm. And in a weird way, him being the strict, because my dad's 100% Italian. Uh, thank God I got that strength of like structure and everything that weirdly helped, ironically, I guess, helped me help my husband structure throughout his addiction and like you were like oh i had to keep an eye on this and keep an eye on that and i did the same thing and i'm like oh my god i'm like my dad right now i feel like i'm a, like a correctional officer of, of, of looking over my husband right now and it's such a sucky way of mm. being a wife but mm -hmm. i feel like that had to be our role for that um, that time period to help our husbands get through whatever they had to get through so and I feel you, girl. I feel you. I get it. <laughs> it's a nightmare. It's it a really nightmare. Like, <laughs> I get it. And it's the same thing with my dad. Like I, I always like my dad and I's relationship is amazing now. Like he's such a good papuli, um, mm -hmm. and he's uh, we have we have such a fantastic relationship now, and he understands me now. 
He's um, different now that he's a grandfather, huh? Yeah. yeah. He is. changes. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. That it never would have happened. Like, yeah. the way that he treats my kids, like, it's in, like it, it's <laughs> wild. Um, but I, I appreciate him more now, too, because of that. Because I, I wasn't, I was able to take my emotions out of it so much when because i was pissed because he had lied and he had done all these things and like i didn't know what was going on and so i literally had to take my emotions and put them on a shelf and just be like okay we're going to do this this and this and get you better yeah mm -hmm. and um but yeah it's i i feel you too and I, it's, it's it's funny tough. i didn't have to deal uh so randy's been through that as well and but i wasn't in his life when that was going on, but growing up, I had dealt with that and, you know, with a family member. And I remember being a teenager and uh, going to meetings mm -hmm. and to NA meetings and sitting in and listening to people sharing their stories. And I remember even when I had kids bringing my kids to these meetings so they can see you know, like the struggle and like, you know, yeah. stay away and, you know, and, and also I saw the other side of it. Like people have so many misconceptions. Oh, you know, they're junkies. They're this, they're that, you know, and, you know, get, just get your shit together. And, and people think that they can't, but then seeing all of these people who've had 20 years clean and now they own a business and now they have family and now they have a house when they were so low. And, you know, it's, I think, I don't know. I, I, I almost feel like even if you don't have anyone with um, that addictive personality or problem that meetings like that, I don't know. I would say to Mike to get a sponsor, even if it's somebody on the phone. He does. He has a he lot. Yeah, okay. he, does. he has a ton of sponsors and like, um, you know, there people in the industry um, that understand yeah. our industry yeah. and understand like, you know, uh, the different things that happen on the road or being yeah, clean. Yeah. And, um, so it, he does have different sponsors. He also has people he sponsors. Now he's motivational speaking. So oh. um, and when he does these uh he does seminars, wrestling seminars. He makes it into a motivational speech. Almost. That's awesome. That's awesome. Because so many times people that come into our industry come in with, you know, either either problems or maybe they had a difficult childhood or maybe they are insecure. And so Mike makes it more of a motivational um, motivational seminar for wrestling rather than just go run the ropes. Right. Um, that's that's awesome. Yeah. That, that, that's so good for them. I, I've seen so many grown men, girl, large grown men come up to my husband and hug him and cry oh, in yeah. my husband's arms because they've lost weight listening to Mike or they've um, are on day 50 of recovery or they're <laughs> they're trying to be in recovery. And like I see these things and then now I'm going to cry. But I see these things and it's like, okay, how far have we come? You know, how far? And, you know, of course, like that thought goes through your mind of like, okay, maybe this marriage isn't for me, but now I see the person he is today. And I'm like, shit, like I would have given up so much like of this lovely human being I get to spend my life with now and of this, this person that motivates others and is this incredible wrestler and father. Um, if I would have given up back then yep. mm -hmm. and um, some people, some people have to. And I understand that if you're going to lose yourself in someone else's recovery, then you need to still take care of yourself. But there is the positive side. And sometimes there is a light at the end mm -hmm. of the tunnel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we're so grateful that uh, you shared all that and we appreciate your vulnerability. And uh, yeah. I think that's one of my favorite things about this podcast when we really get a chance to talk about those real life things, because there are so many people who are affected by those words, because uh, look, mental health, 
physical health, whatever it may be, it's all incredibly important. So uh, we do appreciate you sharing that. And, and with that, I, I do want to add this too. We're also very grateful here on the Wives of Wrestling podcast to partner with a, a company that is very much trying to help people get in physical shape. That, of course, is Athletic Greens with AG1s. And what am I talking about with AG1s? I'm talking about one delicious scoop of AG1, and you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food-sourced ingredients, probiotics, and adaptogens to help start your day right. It's a special blend of ingredients that support your gut health, which, you know, Kimio, I, I, I need that gut health help, okay? Your nervous oh, system. Not. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> the king of the dad bods here. Right? <laughs> your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, aging, all those things. It's lifestyle-friendly, whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, gluten-free, contains less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals or artificial anything while still tasting good, and it supports better sleep quality and recovery. And the best part is... It costs you less than $3 a day. You're investing in your health. It's cheaper than your cold brew habit. It's cheaper than getting all those different supplements yourself. You're investing in an all-in-one nutritional insurance. Ladies, you know what I did the other day? I went and I bought a sous vide. Do you know what sous vide is? It's the, the, the cooking mechanism that you just like put, you fill it. It's like a tub of water and then you put like a, a heater in it and you cook with it. I wasted all oh, yeah. my money on this and I could have just been investing in a better habit for my gut and all those other things with the supplement yeah well i should i should have used ag1s instead i should have invested in that instead how uh how are the the guys doing uh with their ag1s kim how's how's randy O? I know he likes his his cream of rice but how about the taste of ag1 he uh enjoys it in uh not in the cream of rice but in the shake <laughs> Is the one scoop He's, yes the one scoop he he can do that he he cooks cream of rice and he has shakes that's all he there you go uh, knows how to make so <laughs> whatever <laughs> kind of supplement or anything good he tries to jump in his shake uh, uh giovanna maybe we should get an ag1 chicken snacks flavor oh my ah! god please don't because he'll like he'll be like oh good idea <laughs> it's all about convenience and it's all about what's good and what you put in your body and it, the funny part is is my son 18 he's now into his health there he's actually go. doing it with my husband AG1. and then we, and then they go to the gym. So we are trying to get healthier over here. And it's all about convenience, guys. I mean, we were just talking about that, going on vacation. What is convenient? We Kim said the big bad to the little fanny pack. That's what life is about right now. And you got to get it. Right now, it is time to reclaim your health, arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. Just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. And to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com forward slash wives. Again, that is athleticgreens.com forward slash wives to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. And we thank them for sponsoring this podcast. Uh, we got one more question for you here real quick, Maria, before we play our game. Uh, you were talking about WWE the last time. Maybe things didn't work out. I was really into the initial presentation. It was different than anything that we were seeing at that time. Is there a storyline or something you wanted to do maybe with that character that the fans don't necessarily know about that you would have liked to have seen be on TV? Yeah, so it was a Paul Heyman idea, and That's I was excited about it. Yeah. I was really excited about doing it because um, I thought it would be a way you know, to be funny and – be funny in a different way um, as this crazy pregnant chick um, and still be able to be on TV and have fun with that. And we were all about it up until they cut it off. Mm. And, um, you know, do, having the 24 seven title when I was pregnant and oh, eventually yeah. my son is going to have to sign this belt because he was, you know, he was a co-champion. Co-champion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wow. Oh, that's so good. It is. And, but the issue is, is they cut it off too soon. Yeah. I could have stayed on the road and I already had a doctor's note and everything. My doctor was monitoring me just to make sure that flying and everything was fine. And um, they cut it off too short. And what was supposed to happen was eventually Mike was going to turn on me. And um, he was going to have like that motivational stand up for yourself um, winning streak. And then I would come back right after WrestleMania time 
and, you know, beg for forgiveness or just be an incredible heel. And that was just ridiculous. And it didn't happen. So, yeah. I mean, for me, that would have been so nice just to help my husband turn and him to, like, go off into the sunset with this great character and then just didn't happen. And, like, they asked him to cry on TV and he... He was able to cry and he, um, you know, he, he really fought to do right by WWE and it just didn't work out. Um, but I have to say like now more than ever, I've heard about him talking about going back because that was his dream. Mm -hmm. WWE was his dream. And, um, he grew up, you know, watching WWE and wore the t-shirts to high school and he started training when he was 15 years old. And, um, wow. when I first met him, like he, all he talked about was going to WWE and, uh, being, you know, part of WrestleMania, just like you know, everybody dreams of doing. And he didn't get to have anything close to that. So we'll see. You never know. It, it just goes round and round and round. It really yeah. does. And it would, be, uh, it would be cool to have a you and Mike versus Mike and Maurice. I always wanted it to be the real couple versus the it couple. Yeah. It's like we we'll come out in like you know in like sweatpants, and we're like, oh yeah, the kids are gotten you know. It's just right. <laughs> right. Oh, that would be great. They could come out all bedazzled and fucking uh-huh. and shit, and you guys come out. Yeah, oh, that would be so cool. Meanwhile, you're just trying to book yourself to see Maurice's uh, backside. That's that's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that. That's you know what? That's just a benefit. It's yeah. just- <laughs> Uh, oh. Our kids are Kim's like, like and I'll be the ref, and then you can throw me in a table. <laughs> oh, there we go, the table. <laughs> well, I told the ladies if they could swing getting Maurice on the show. Um, Maria, I- you can throw me through the table and be like, "That's for your husband being an asshole and shoot coffee." <laughs> <at me." laughs> hey, back! I like it. Years ago, seventeen <laughs> years yes. ago, right, I hold grudges. Damn it! <laughs> so angry. No. So, one of my favorite things about your most recent run, I will say, was your great theme song. You guys had like oh. the best freaking theme song ever. You do. See, I come back and do that character just to do the theme song. Oh. I was just pumped. For those who aren't familiar, it was like a Sammy Hagar 80s arena rock love song ballad ripoff. The best. Amazing. Amazing. And it got me thinking, you know, we're trying to spice things up here a little bit on the wise of wrestling. What if we did a little name that tune wrestling style? Oh, God. So I I'm going to help you out. Well, I'm going to help you out here, okay? So okay. I'm going to play. I'm going to play a little snippet of some wrestling theme songs here and i'm going to give you a multiple choice response okay okay? and we'll see who wins i'm going to ask you each individually first maria i'm going to ask you last on each one because you might have a little bit of an advantage since you these are all people that maria worked with okay 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 i'm terrible (laughs) i'm terrible with names and oh i'm 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 going to describe them i'm going to give you multiple choice options yeah the girl with the big butt (laughs) so. <laughs> All right. So you guys ready for number one? Yes, sir. Okay. Here we go. Here is number one. <laughs> Let me show you what love is. Let me show you how to move your body. Move your body. Move your body. I don't know, but I like this. All right. I have no clue. So, uh, so, so your three options are that was okay. either Maurice, uh, Candace Michelle, or Layla. Okay, let's start with you, Kim. Is that Maurice, Candace Michelle, or Layla? I'm going to go Layla. You're going Layla. with Layla? Okay. Giovanna, what are you going with? Candace. Candace, Maria? It was Layla. Oh, You're shoot. You're going with Layla? So one of you got it right, and it was Giovanna. Giovanna, <laughs> you're correct. <laughs> No way. Was, no way. Was, he was doing the thing. I was picking up. That's what I was thinking. I was I'm like, late body. Her dancing. Okay. Bro, back in that Happy era. Happy birthday to her. Oh, my John God. Abel, John Abel was a big Candace Michelle fan. Hey. Big, big Candace Michelle fan. So, uh, Giovanna. Garcia. Lillian Garcia just had her birthday. That was her birthday. Sorry. Mm-hmm. 
She's great she too. I, I'd love to get Lillian on here. She's great. Um, okay, so Giovanna, you're in the lead here. We oh got God, four more. Okay, let's go. Uh, here, now I like here, this game. Here's, I'm too excited. <laughs> here's number two. Okay. Gotta be Maurice. So Spanish. So, so uh, let's start with you, Kim. Your options are Maurice, Jillian Hall, or Maria. Maurice. What are you going with? Maurice. Maurice. Giovanna? Did you say her? Uh, it was Maria's I, I, song. Your options are Maurice, Maria, or Jillian Hall. Crap, I should have saw her face. <laughs> um, Jillian? You're going with Jillian? Maria? It's Maurice. It's French. It, is, it is, in fact, Maurice. It was. It was like. Yes. Uh, I just can't see her do this. Oh. Uh. <laughs> yes. You know yes. I have to get that one. So there you go. Okay. Everyone's on the board here. I like that. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Let's, let's go with uh, number three. Here she comes again, like good medicine. Every step she takes, my blood is flowing. Her legs go on and on for you. Okay. <laughs> okay. The stems. She so, got the stems. So, so our, <laughs> our, our, our options, our options for that one are Alicia Fox, Stacy Keebler, or Maria. Oh. Did you put Stacy Keeler because it said uh, legs? Legs. I'm 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 asking you guys. These are the options. So on and on. Uh, Kim, who are we going with there? God. Alicia Fox, Stacy Keebler, or Maria? It's not Alicia Fox. Maria. Who is it? <laughs> it's got to be Stacy. I don't know. Stacey. Stacey. I, as soon as I heard it, I thought you're Maria. Both saying, you're both saying Uh-oh. Stacey. Oh, look at her face. Giovanna said Stacy. Maria? That's Maria. Maria. Is that Maria first? It was supposed to be Stacy's song, but she left after Dancing with the Stars. And I hated that song because of it. Because I was like, I would always say, because it goes, her legs go on and on for days. And in my head, I go, but not really, because I knew it was for Stacy. And I was yeah. like, no, Stacy, no. So I always had like this, not really, in my head. <laughs> and I still, to this day, like, <laughs> I yeah. love that. Yeah, funny, funny. My funny the story is Alicia Fox ended up with my first song. Mm-hmm. Okay. Really? Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. So, so it's all connected. All, all three connected. of us. There you go. All right. So again, these are all people you worked with. Here is number four. Uh, what do I say? I hear voices in my head. That wasn't right. <laughs> Okay, a little instrumental there. Was it CM Punk? Was it The Sandman? Or was it Randy Orton? Kim? That was not Randall, but that beginning sounded like him. Okay, who are you going uh, with? CM Punk, Sandman, CM Punk, Sandman, or Randy Orton? Oh, God. I only know, so, gosh, I only know the CM Punk song, uh, the cult of personality. Okay. So Sandman. You're going Sandman, Giovanna, Sandman, CM Punk. Okay. Because I feel like this is a trick question. You always think I'm trying to trick you. <laughs> you do. You do. Um, I feel like this, because I don't know Randy's first song. Mm-hmm. I feel like this could be hey, Randy. Nothing you can say. Nothing's going to change what you've done to me. Okay, so that's oh. Randy. All right. Never mind. I'm going to change. Are you changing it? Who are you going with? Come on. I'm just going to say Randy. You're going with Randy? It is. Maria? That sounded like him in the beginning. 
Is it Punk's first song? Okay, you're going with Punk? Okay. So Kim went with Sandman, Giovanna went with Randy, Maria went with Punk, so we're going to have, someone's going to be right here. And uh, Giovanna, you are correct, it is Randy Orton. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It's your question. I told you. That is, in oh, fact, the so hey. Nothing that you can say. That that is, is, that oh, is wait. Up. Play the song again. Play the song. No. Again. <laughs> she, did right, she did a Kurt. She did a Kurt. I'm going to play What it. I do? You did the Kurt move. Ready? Here it comes. Ah, oh, boo. Nothing you can say. There you go. Okay, so I wasn't lying to you. Okay, all right, uh, Giovanna, you are you are in the lead here. The lead, girl. Or, or you're at least tied with Maria, I should say. Uh, the two of you, as we go to uh, the last one on our list here. Ready? Here we go. Hello, hello. Oh, Kelly, Kelly. <laughs> Thanks, Kelly, Kelly. <laughs> I didn't... <laughs> Points. I'm the pointer. Charmel, Kelly, Kelly, Alicia Fox. What are we going with? We've got Kelly, Kelly, Giovanna. You're saying Kelly, Kelly? I'm just going to say the same. Thanks, Kelly. Okay. Maria, Maria, what are we Kelly, Kelly. Come on. Kelly, Kelly. It is. The pointer. The pointer. It is Kelly. Posh, Kelly. Like posh it, is, it is indeed Kelly, Kelly. You are not wrong about that. Okay. Thanks. So, uh, so, so that means we, we have a tie uh, between Giovanna and Maria. And uh, I, I've got a tiebreaker if you would like to try to settle the tiebreaker. Oh, do it, do it, do it. Do it. Do it? Okay. Why not? Okay. This one, I will say this. So, <laughs> so this one is a bit of a retro theme. Okay. Okay. And uh, if one of you gets it right, you will win. And if not, then we will just call it a tie. Okay. So here we go. Hi. <laughs> Okay, so oh, no. your options are The Undertaker, One Man Gang, or Gangrel. Oh, come on. Giovanna. The gang. What was the last two? So the Undertaker, One Man Gang, or Gangrel? I'm going to say the second one. You're going with One Man Gang. Maria. I think it's Gangrel, but I'm also curious about the... Um, the Undertaker, Taker. One Man Gang, or Gangrel? You just said you think it's Gangrel. Taker had that time when he was doing motorcycle stuff. He was. Uh, I'm going to go with Gangrel, though. We have a winner. One of you got it right. The winner of our first ever Wives of Wrestling podcast. Name that. Oh, two. Bill. Maria Canellis Bennett. It is in <laughs> Snaps all around. Bravo. Ooh, you whore. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. I'm she got to flip the good hair. She does. You have great hair. You really she have great hair. Look at this right now. I need to wash it. What so kind of shampoo do you use? Because I feel like my hair is like breaking right now. You're not going to be pleased if I tell you. What? Because I use like the hotel stuff. That's nice. This bitch. Just got good jeans. I Get do. out of here. I use the hotel stuff, and then I wash my face with bar soap. I'm uh, <laughs> natural Jesus. beauty. Yes, oh, dang it. Natural yeah. beauty. Well, but, she's, she's Greek, so they put wind. Greek. They put wind. Oil skin and so, you know. shit. What do you mean they put Windex on everything? Like my big clean? fat Greek. My big they fat don't. Greek. Lady? Oh Jesus. Okay. They don't. Though. How offended are you with I that know. movie? Uh, nah, story, I, I, right? thought, I thought it was ridiculous though because I was like no that's not how it is no <laughs> that Greek wedding though yes okay. there's so many people and lots of dancing and like everyone dances and everyone eats cool. lamb yes okay yeah. All right, gotcha uh well th this has been a lot of fun and uh you were you were in the lead for our swear jar tally but then Kim Orange just rattled off a whole bunch yes! of stuff. It <laughs> so therefore I feel like I didn't even curse. No, you, you like, there was one stretch where you just rattled off like nine in a row. It was pretty impressive. What? So, so that, you are, that Italian vein just like pumped down. Yeah. 
Or so break you are the loser of our swear jar this week, Kim Warren, which means and our farewell toast every single week here, Maria, is our John Cena quote of the week. Now, John, uh, uh, Maria has made out with John why? Cena. Which, which, why is there a John Cena quote of the week? I need to know. Uh, uh, <laughs> Go ahead, Kim. That's, that's kind of my fault. Um, so, like, I get a big kick out of all John Cena's inspirational quotes every week. I'm like, he can't possibly write that like every day <laughs> you know and and Randy's like inspiring. Randy's like mm, it's probably him <laughs> he's probably it's probably him I'm like well anyway it was like kind of like almost a little bit of a goof but he got great inspirational quotes <laughs> he does so and they always fit our podcast somehow John always finds the right ones to fit that I do so Please indulge and uh, read us our John Cena quote of the week this week. I, I, shall, I shall. I just pulled it up. And it okay. says uh, from my bowing friend, John Cena, uh, when chasing, mastering anything, never neglect the fundamentals. That includes the attempts to master self. I love that. Cheers. Uh, cheers you. to all of you here. How you doing, John? How you doing, Johnny boy? <laughs> Giovanna, to imaginary two. Cheers to you. Mm -hmm. Delicious. And I have a funny John story. Yes, so. please. You made out with John, didn't you? <laughs> on TV? Yeah. <laughs> was that your first on screen kiss? <laughs> I think it was. It was a. So it was just days after um, it came out that I was dating punk. So we thought it was very ironic that it happened within days of like. There wow. being all this, you know, hubbub about me dating punk, which it didn't last very long, but it was like <laughs> within days of that. Um, so, you know, we, we like to all go out together. And uh, one time we're all out together in uh, Europe and I was never a big drinker. And when I did, I it wasn't great for me in the morning. So I just didn't drink very much on the road. I always pretended. And I thought nobody knew. So <laughs> one time we're all out, we're all drinking. I'm doing my usual, oh, I'll just pour it in this plant over here. And you know, whatever people are handing me drinks. And uh, John does one of these. And I was like, oh shit. And he goes, I know what you're doing. And he's like, but I respect the fact that you came out. <laughs> and I went, Look how he's so I'm nice about I'm it. I'm okay. Here. I'm okay. <laughs> so, yeah, I nice. respect you. I respect you. Oh, oh, I love oh, Always great guy. Uh, so. Well, we always encourage you guys to leave us your five star reviews for the Wise of Wrestling podcast, like this one from Julian, South Carolina, who says, Fabulous podcast. I agree. She says, I so enjoy Wives of Wrestling. Y'all are so honest. The world would be a better place if people simply told the truth. The fact that all of you can relate to regular people is a breath of fresh air. Love Kim, Giovanna, and John. And she also adds this. I have successful unmarried female friends. So, John, contact me. I'm 55, so not sure if older ladies are in the running. So... <laughs> My Did mother you is... One? Oh. Did you... <laughs> <laughs> My mother loves John Maria. Got a little crush. Uh, on yeah. Um, but yeah, so thank you, Julie, for that. That was lovely. Appreciate the oh, review. Julie. I'll uh, I'll hit you up and let you know. We'll uh, get in on that. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> Maria, this this has been so much fun. Thank you so much for hopping on and hanging out with us here, especially before you are your, your great, Maria. I think I think it's so cool that you are a successful, beautiful. You don't forget like who you are you can be a mom you can work and you can be still you still show that you're sexy and you're a woman you're not just like a mom so i totally dig that and we love your brain we, we love how smart you really are and we that love you your brain <laughs> Wait, her, her good that brain was probably the first thing, the first time you ever heard that <laughs> right. we love you thank you guys so much i like I think that you two are a breath of fresh air. I really do. Uh, I admire you guys so much. I I just, yeah. It, you guys represent um, such good women in this industry that it's incredible. And I appreciate you uh, having me on. That's why I was like, yes, 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 I will be on. I love them. 
Um, and you guys have always been so kind to me, and I appreciate that. And keep killing it. You guys are an inspiration to me. You too. You too. Same, babe. So both these ladies have wanted to, because I work on the Indies as a manager, and both of these ladies have wanted to do an angle with me so badly. So I'm banking on you booking this angle here. Oh, yeah. No problem. Right. Got it. All right. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> so we're going to make it happen. I love it. Uh, so, Maria, we have one last tradition that we do every single week here as we say goodbye, and that is we, we – say farewell and then we throw up a one dick it's a kim orin household tradition where the last person <laughs> to say one dick loses so when i tee you up here and i say and with that we bid you a one dick you just have to shout it real quick okay it's, you it's just, just have to goodbye do, just say <laughs> one is dick. This some way of just getting me to shout one dick is that yeah, <laughs> i think kim i think that was kim's family Thank you. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. I got you. Strange background. <laughs> so, with that said, we thank you for tuning into the Wise Wrestling Podcast, and we bid you a one day. Day. <laughs> Make Thank it a big you. one. We'll yeah. see you next time. 